Well, it's interesting how this happens, this shift and change in companies and organizations. It starts as a dream. And that dream then germinates into an idea. And the idea then finds its way into organizational planning. And with the American Heart Association, a life is saved. It is an amazing journey. And it's one that happens in a time you're kind of unfamiliar with. It's really called the now. Most people think of change happening in the future, being future driven. The most important time in change environments is the now. It's right now. As you're sitting here today, as you're thinking about what you hear, as you go home and implement those ideas. One of the first things that happens is that the barriers that exist dissolve. They're gone. And it's a traditionally difficult time for an organization. It hurts because everybody's used to those silos they've been in. But when those barriers dissolve, you create an expressway of ideas, a virtual freeway of new thinking, the ability to connect those ideas into something productive. And what happens then is the spirit of an organization changes. That's a very tangible thing, an organizational spirit. You can get a sense of it by being around a company a very short amount of time. What you look for is this collaboration that occurs, a collaboration of spirits. And when that happens, companies see the big picture. They see this grand idea. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm going to introduce it to you in even a better model. This is the Hoberman Sphere, created by Paul Hoberman. Systems that have no energy do not work. Period. I don't care what kind of system it is. Give me any system, biological, mechanical, technological, uh, stellar, makes no difference. No energy in the system, system doesn't work. That's universal. That's an actual truth. I seldom get actual truths. So there's one of them today. Actual truth. This system has, this, the Hoberman sphere exists like this when it has no energy placed into it. But if I were to place energy into it, it would turn totally different. And I'm going to place the universal driving force of our, uh, the, the, the driving force of our universe into this. What is the driving force of energy in our universe? Yeah, who said it? Somebody right over here. What did you say? It's gravity. Yes, that's a good starburst one. But I won't toss it because I'm, I've missed everyone so far today. Okay, I'm going to add gravity, gravity to the Hoberman sphere. And the Hoberman sphere will increase in size 15 times as long as I have energy in it. Right? That's gravity. Gravity will hold the Hoberman sphere over forever because it's an energy source making the system work. Now, let me tell you, I'll add another form of energy to it. I'll add, if I roll it, what kind of energy is that? Kinetic. Very good. I'm going to add kinetic energy to it. And then watch while kinetic energy stays in the system, the system stays expanded. Come on and work for me. But the energy goes out and the system collapses on itself. Folks, one of the, and, and I hate to use this word too because there are no such thing as secrets. If someone tells you, we're going to teach you the secrets of client relationships, don't ever go to a workshop like that because there are no such thing as secrets, right? Everybody knows what's going on. I haven't said one thing here today that you didn't already know, not one. I want to talk a little bit now about time. It's really an interesting thing because we mess it up so badly and so royally. Um, I'll give you an example. Let me start with um, how many people have an alarm clock in their bedroom? Raise your hand. How many people have the alarm clock set about 10 minutes fast? Who are you fooling? <laughs> that amazes me that people do that. You know what they do? I figure you are the kind of people that like to start your day with an anxiety attack <laughs> or a math problem. Well, you wake up like at 6 a.m. and you turn around, you look at the clock, and it says it's like, um, it's, it's 6.10, and you go, oh my God, I'm 10, and they go, no, 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 I'm not, it's, it's only 6 o'clock, and, and so you're doing your anxiety attack and your math problem in your head. I hate to tell you guys, but at that point, you're awake. You then, you've, and then there are the people who set their clock like 12 minutes or 7 minutes. They're the really sick puppies because... Those aren't even natural numbers to do the easy math right when you're trying to wake up. So already you think that it's a manipulatable and palliable and malleable element time. But yet most of the time we think of it along the lines like this. We think of it as linear. You've always been taught to do timelines. 
My, my sons have projects that deal with linear elements of time. And we take these time models and we bend and bend and bend until this traditional model breaks. That's not what time's like. Time is like a rubber band. It's completely flexible based on your belief in it and your belief structure. I can give you a great example. I'll give you your alarm clock. I'll give you another one. How about if we just take, oh, let's say, um, March 31st and 2 o'clock isn't really 2 o'clock anymore, it's 1 o'clock. And then we'll come in the fall, we'll take 1 o'clock, make it 2 o'clock again, or make 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, unless you live in Indiana, Arizona, you don't play the game. You do that enough and you have no idea what time it really is right now, do you? Of course not. You do that, you balance those things out. Let's take February, it's only got 28, we'll give it 29 every fourth year. Pope Gregory did that, right? Pope Gregory decided to stick another day in there. That's how malleable time is to us. How many people don't have time enough to read books that they want to read? How many people don't have time enough, to, time enough to learn how to play a musical instrument? How many people don't have time enough to go to movies? You need to make time to go to movies. Because <laughs> all life secrets are found in movies and music. In case you didn't know that, all life secrets. How many people are James Taylor fans, the musician James Taylor? Anybody with your hand up can tell me what the secret of life is? Very good. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? Raise your hand. OK, here's your starburst. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Very good. It's like a chain. I'm not going to do the Chinese ring trick, but I'm going to use this as, a, as an example of what values do to companies. They create a tautness. This tautness right here that occurs is called tension, right? Tension. Creative tension, or the tension that exists in a company based on its values, is good tension creates energy. We're talking about energy and values and core purposes. Companies that exist, even in chaotic changes, when things are happening so rapidly they can't even imagine what the next step is going to be, survive. Because this chain, though as taunt as it may be, creates a firm foundation for anything that moves. The market moves, the niches move, the cash moves, the people move. It's hard to hold on to good people. Especially guys like us, because we start somewhere, we start our own company. We put the guy who we started with out of business because we know how to do it better. We see all the mistakes. We're constantly learning. You know, entrepreneurs are like business sponges. They absorb stuff and then they squeeze it out and it comes out different. It comes out better. It comes out unique. And those elements are incredibly important to success for entrepreneurs in America. So this value thing, these core values, they don't change. Truth, trust, respect, courtesy, honesty. And one of the key elements that you guys have is community. Because every entrepreneur that I have ever known that has been successful has been actively involved in the dynamics of his or her community. Because you cannot exist as an island. You can only exist within a community. And communities are only viable when they are moving, when they are active, when they show and have energy. Those are the communities of tomorrow. Those are the communities that exist that we thrive in. Those are the communities that we buy our home in, that we go to our neighbor's wedding in, that we choir our friends' funerals in, that we schmooze over the back fence in, that we go to the neighborhood bar in. Those are communities of vitality. And those communities of vitality come when you take a look at individual elements. Coach Mike Krzyzewski is the coach of the Duke basketball team, the Blue Demons. They are 28-1 and one this year. They are the number one team in the nation. When you ride the bus in a basketball team, the players get the back half of the bus. The coaches never go back to the back side of the bus. They get to stay in the front. That is the territory of the players. It is their world, their culture, their environment. Earlier in the year, they weren't playing to their potential. And Krzyzewski, during the bus ride from the airport back home, walked back to the players' portion of the bus. The players were stunned. They sat there in silence, not knowing what the heck this was all about. And he sat down in one of the seats, and he told them a story. He said, you know, my mom had uh, two dresses to her name. Um, when I was young. She took very good care of those two dresses. She never had a nickel to rub together for anything like you guys go out buy CDs and stuff now. Yet I never remember her once being unhappy. Why do you think that is? And the players looked at him and didn't say anything. You know, she was part of a family. She knew that. It was bigger and grander and greater than she was. Yet without her, it couldn't have existed. And he told his players, that's the family you are a member of. That's the family, if you look around you right now, that you're a member of. Together, it's bigger and greater 
and grander than anything you could ever do alone. Yet without those things that you do alone, the family could not exist. That's what